for the introduction, and I'm very sorry for this uh, such a uh, terrible voice. So I, I, I hope you can understand my uh, bibliograph, not my, not, not my talk itself. Okay? Um, I'm Kosei Yamaguchi from Tohoku University uh, in Japan, and uh, I'm talking about the uh, uh, result of the uh, geochemical analysis of the samples from Ghana. Okay? So why do we, uh, are we interested in 2.2 GA, the period of 2.2 billion years ago? Well, uh, th uh, this figure is from uh, Lion Zeto 2014, which has been frequently used uh, in this kind of talk. And then 2.2 uh, GA is here. So this 2.2 uh, GA is just uh, before the, uh, just after the right after uh, the infrared uh, rise of oxygen in the atmosphere, GOE, Great Oxi Oxidation Event, at around 2.4 to 2.2 GA. And uh, by that time, atmosphere could have been oxygenated and shallow ocean too. But how about the deep ocean? So, so far, a few studies of non-shallow environment, which is deep, deep environment, at 2.0 GA, uh, has been done. So please remember that the uh, Mantle Supergroup in Australia and the Transvaal Supergroup in South Africa and also Huronian Supergroup in Canada. All, all of these very uh, really important ge ge uh, geological records have uh, uh, mainly uh, shallow uh, rocks in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the upper portions. Okay. So here is the uh, stepwise model of the stepwise oxidation of the atmosphere ocean system. Uh, this is uh, originally from uh, casting uh, to uh, 1993 and then almost on 1997. So the, from step stage one to stage four, the time is from left to right. Uh, we have no oxygen in the atmosphere, no in the shallow ocean, or no, in, uh, no, uh, no oxygen in the deep ocean. But with time, uh, we, uh, at, at most, uh, oxygen is invading in these parts. So we, have, may, we, may, we may have had a GOE uh, for, for the transition from stage two to stage, stage three. Okay? Uh, the timing is still controversial, but uh, my uh, um, interest is here. How long did it take for the deep ocean to be fully oxygenated? Uh, quite soon, or we have a t time lag. So this is just the motivation of, of, of my uh, uh, study. Okay. So I looked for uh, the uh, I looked at the uh, geologic map and to look for uh, deep samples uh, throughout the world. And then I found that the uh, there is a greenstone belt in Ghana, uh, whose age is about 2.2 GA. And then about 10 years ago, I first went to Ghana to do uh, preliminary field work. Then I decided that the, uh, I realized that uh, this is a very uh, good place, perfect place to do uh, uh, drilling, to obtain a deep faces uh, samples from 2.2 G period. And then, uh, luckily enough, I could uh, obtain the uh, funding uh, to, do, uh, to realize the continental drilling in Ghana. And that, was, uh, uh, that happened in the fall of 2015 in, the, in this area, uh, uh, southwest, southwest Ghana. And then we obtained 160 meter long 2.2 GA deep faces sedimentary rocks. These are least altered, and then we got a 100% recovery. So this, is based, this core is based on the uh, alternation of shales and volcanic stones and uh, sandstones, uh, some coarser grains. And for this study, uh, samples are from uh, the uppermost 20 meter unit. So if we assume the, uh, we don't know the sedimentation rate, but if we, if we assume five millimeter per thousand uh, year, then this 20 meter section represents a four million year, four million year period. Okay. Okay, uh, this is the uh, volcanic sandstone, coarser grains, and uh, greenish volcanic uh, silt stones, and then black shales. But uh, this presentation is only for this, uh, the, uh, up the uppermost se section. Okay, and here is the uh, uh, photo of the actual core, and which will be um, um, expanded in the next slide. So here is the uh, just a uh, uh, representative photo of the drilling activity in Ghana. Um, there were lots of there were lots of lots of uh, dust uh, coming from Saharan Desert and also uh, mist uh, from the nearby ocean, and then uh, kids. Uh, drilling activity was always um, observed by tens of kids, okay? T tens of curious kids. Okay, so anyway, I could obtain this kind of beautiful, beautiful uh, drilling samples. Okay. 
So first, I would like to show you the uh, result of the uh, ion speciation analysis. Here are the uh, depth profiles of ion speciation from left to right, ion pyrite, pyrite bound ion, and ion carbonate, ion magnetite, uh, magnetite bound ion, and ion oxide, and then uh, total ion, FET or sigma T, total ion. And on, on this, in, in this uh, depth profile, uh, red dashed line represents the average, uh, the ion content or average shell of a PAS uh, by, uh, from uh, Taylor and McLennan 1985 textbook. Then I'd like, to, I'd like you to look at the uh, um, left-hand slide, uh, ion uh, pyrite, pyrite ions. Uh, we divided the samples into three uh, units, uh, pyrite pro lower samples here, and pyrite pro upper samples here in the uh, open symbols, and then pyrite rich samples with uh, field circles. Okay. Then, then I uh, would like to show you the, uh, this kind of ion speciation plot. The y-axis is uh, uh, ion uh, pyrite ion divided by high reactive ion and the whole the x axis, horizontal axis, this is ion high reactive versus, uh, to uh, ion total, total ion. So obviously, uh, many of the samples with uh, no pyrite, pyrite plus samples are plotted in this oxic domain here. And then uh, pyrite rich samples are plotted in this euxinic region. This feature is also evident in this uh, sulfur carbon plot, sulfur uh, pyrite bound sulfur, and uh, organic carbon content. Uh, open symbols, pyrite plus samples are plotted on the uh, trend of normal marine. Uh, this, this is a representative slope for the Phanerozoic uh, typical uh, non uh, sulfuric uh, black shales, uh, uh, normal shales, I should say. And then uh, these uh, pyrite rich samples are also plotted in this, uh, in this region suggesting euxine conditions or uh, syngenetic pilot formations in the water ground, okay? So the environment uh, was essentially oxic, but with sporadic development of anoxic or euxine conditions with time. Okay. Then I would like to show you the uh, uh, reverse element uh, concentrations for the samples. Uh, the concentrations are normalized by PAS, post archean Australian average shale. Okay, and like again, uh, black uh, lines represent pyrite rich samples, upper samples, and then these uh, blue and orange lines are uh, pyrite pro samples. Okay, and we have, we seem to have uh, some po uh, positive uh, serum anomaly, right? They exist, but no European anomaly, right? This is based uh, normalized to uh, PAS, right? So basaltic uh, sedimentary rocks should have a slightly higher uh, elevated European concentration on, on this kind of plot. So this is not the European anomaly, right? So pyrite pro samples have more classic basalt-like signature, right? Flat pattern with some depleted in the right layer sediment concentrations, right? And then while uh, pyrite-rich samples here show uh, more than seawater-like uh, uh, light rare earth element is smaller than heavier rare earth element signature with more de depleted total rare earth uh, content. Okay? So, actually, this is quite consistent with the Euxine conditions for pyrite formation in pyrite rich samples. This uh, kind of rare earth element pattern is quite common for the anoxic water gram in modern day environment. Okay? This is due to a uh, reductive dissolution of uh, release of a uh, Cerium from sediment to the overlying water column. Okay. Then layer sediment and cerium anomaly. Then I uh, evaluated this ratio, cerium over cerium star values. So this is just uh, you know cerium con concentration divided by cerium star values. This is a hypothetical value between lanthanum and praseodymium here, right? Then uh, in the lower sections we have limited, very limited range for the cerium cerium star values, but uh, for uh, py uh, pyrite pro uh, upper part, we have slight increase in the range. And for, for the pyrite rich samples, only the two data points are you know, uh, 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 spe 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 spectacular, but uh, we have an increase in range of the sodium over sodium 
ratios. Okay, again, pilot each samples have wider range of serum over serum star ratios, and this may represent the changes in redox state with time, right? A sporadic uh, de development of uxinic or anoxic water column uh, to form pyrite and to, to, uh, to have more uh, increased concentration of the serum in the, in the water column. Then um, I would like you to look at the uh, trace metal concentrations for these samples. Okay. And then uh, x-axis for these four plots are um, aluminum oxide, you should read weight percent, okay. and versus uh, four kinds of transition metals, chromium, molybdenum, nickel, and copper. Okay. And uh, on the uh, pilot samples here, field circle have slightly positive correlations with al al aluminum oxide content. R2 value is 0 0.6570, 20, and 55. This is quite small. So uh, this may suggest that yeah, we may have had uh, increased continental weathering. First, I thought that these metals could have been provided to the sedimentary environment by hydrothermal uh, input, but uh, these metals have more, more weaker correlation with iron content. So uh, I uh, th then thought that uh, these are due to uh, enhanced continental um, weathering or changing uh, simply mythology, um, more co coarser uh, grains. Okay. okay, then I would like, to I'd like you to look at the uh, lower pilot per samples here, okay? So pyrite plus samples in the lower sections have weak correlation between organic carbon content and iron carbonate content that is shown in the next slide. Okay. Well, so pyrite plus samples in the lower sections have uh, this kind of correlations, suggesting that uh, ferrous ion formed by a biological ferric ion reduction combined with uh, bi uh, bicarbonate ion to form iron carbonate eventually. And pyrite didn't form effectively because the biogenic sulfide was not available in this oxic environment. So uh, iron 2 plus combined with bicarbonate, not with uh, sulfide. Okay. Then uh, this, this kind of this is just an add-on type of a slide. So I measured the carbon subcomposition of organic carbon, and they are mostly around uh, minus 25 per mil, which is not so special. Okay. So this is just uh, uh, showing the uh, origin of uh, uh, organic carbon in, in, in the samples, which uh, may be uh, photosynthetic act activity in the upper oceans. So conclusions. Uh, geochemical and isotopic analysis of 2.2 GA old uh, samples uh, in Ghana suggest the uh, following. Essentially, oxic deep ocean, uh, uh, and the uh, carbon is provided to a uh, deep ocean from the surface ocean, and then iron reduction could have occurred, and then sporadic development of anoxic euxinic uh, water column, right, leading to a uh, syngenetic pilot formations. So this is a major conclusion. It didn't take long for the, the deep ocean to become oxic right after the infrared GOE at around 2.4 to 2.2 GA. And this study has implications for the redox evolution of the atmosphere ocean system in the early years. And future work would be uh, to measure surface of compositions uh, and ion stops. But uh, for uh, molybdenum and chromium isotopes, uh, I would like to have your help and need collaborations. So samples, these samples can be shared upon request. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Maybe one quick question while we're transferring speakers. And please, the last speaker, come to the front. Okay. Thank you very much.